Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Sally Cap. I'm the Lord Mayor of Melbourne and I'm delighted to join you today for the City Switch Awards, awards that recognise the laudable achievements of so many organisations around town. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which the City of Melbourne is gathered, the Bunurong, Bunurong and the Wurundjeri Wurrung peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I'm Sandy Vershaw, the Lord Mayor of the City of Adelaide and I'm on traditional country of the Ghana people of Adelaide Plains. Mani Naputni, Nadlu Tambandi, Nadlu Ghana, Yatanga Tikandi. Welcome to you all, acknowledging that we meet on traditional country of the Ghana people and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with this beautiful land and acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. I would like to begin by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional custodians of our land, and part of the oldest living culture on earth. And I pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. And I also acknowledge the people of the many nations who live in our city. And I pay my respect to other First Nations peoples across Australia. Welcome everyone, I'm Jilly Gibson, the Mayor of North Sydney, and I want to thank you for joining us for the City Switch Awards. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet, the Camaragal people. Hello, I'm Basil Zempelis, Lord Mayor of the City of Perth. I'm speaking to you today from the traditional lands of the Wajunk Noongar people, where we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. On behalf of the City of Perth, welcome to the City Switch Awards. Hello, let me join our partner council Lord Mayors in welcoming you and thanking you for being online with us today. My name is Zoe Baker, City Switch Program Manager for Sydney, and I'll be your MC for the awards event. This time not from stage, but from my workplace to yours, whether that's back in the office or in your home or a hybrid of the two. This has been the reality for many of us over the past year. And while all of us program managers would love to be seeing you in person to celebrate the awards and your hard work like we normally do, one of the upsides of doing the um, event online is that we can come together in one single event. Uh, that does, however, mean that we have each of the state awards segments to get through as well as the national recognition. So there's quite a lot to get through. So a quick run through of our agenda for today. We'll be hearing a year in review update from Katie Shamus, Chair of the City Switch National Steering Committee, followed by our really exciting keynote from Dr. Rebecca Huntley. We'll then proceed through the state award finalists and winner announcements, followed by the national recognition and awards. We have tried to keep these segments nice and tight so that we're not here all day, um, but it does mean that we'll only be getting uh, some snippets of award projects presented today, but please keep an eye out for profiles and case studies later on. And we do have a Q&A button you'll find um, somewhere on your screen, depending on what device you're using, if you want to make a comment or ask a question, and we will be trying to answer those throughout the event. So without further ado, let's get going. Hi everyone, I'm Katie Shamos from the City of Sydney and on behalf of the City Switch National Steering Committee and all the program managers, I'd like to thank everyone for joining the awards today from all across Australia. I feel very honoured to be presenting here today, having only attended City Switch Awards as an attendee. This event is a time to come together and celebrate sustainable action. And I think at the beginning of COVID, there were many wondering whether environmental ambitions would be put on hold and momentum lost. How wrong we were. While this has been a disruptive last year, economically, socially, and personally, not only have we seen communities come together to tackle the health crisis, but we've also seen the business community stay committed to sustainable action. When we've spoken to many of you over this year, we've been so inspired by the work you're doing on target setting, policy and strategy. You've also carried out work in your tenancies and done the preparations for better waste behaviour and energy performance. And you've done all of this while many of you have been working from home and your offices have not been fully occupied. 
Since our last awards event in 2019, the program has continued to grow in membership, something we didn't envisage in 2020. We've had some big government tenancies join from states and federal agencies, as well as signatories adding more of their portfolio. New signatories of all shapes and sizes have also joined us. We are seeing more and more businesses ready to take action. It's been encouraging to see businesses use sustainability as a way to engage and work together with staff, with some of you running green weeks and green challenges and sharing sustainability at home tips. This only reinforces what we know, that taking action on the environment empowers people and creates positive change. And the more green champions you can switch on in your organisation, the easier action gets both at work and at home. Across Australia, uptake of renewable energy continues to grow, with 2020 being a record year of renewable power purchase agreements. We've also heard from Climate Active that they've processed more carbon neutral certifications than ever before. We're very proud to say that City Switch signatories have led the way on this too. A huge congratulations to these 27 signatories who are certified carbon neutral. This is where we all need to be aiming, and it's great to see so many of us already on that path. We know many more of you are working towards investing in renewable energy and setting carbon neutral targets, so I'm looking forward to seeing this list grow even bigger by the next awards event, which I'm very much hoping we'll be celebrating in person. The number of award submissions we received in 2020 has been impressive too, so I'll wrap up and we can get to those winner announcements. We will be sharing more information of the great projects and outcomes in more detail later, so please keep an eye out on our website and LinkedIn page. Congratulations to all our finalists, good luck to everyone, and thank you to all our City Switch signatories for being such an inspiring and leading group of businesses. Thank you, Katie. It's been really great to see that there's lots of momentum and rather than COVID putting the brakes on sustainability action, what you guys have been telling us and showing us through your efforts is that our work is more important than ever. The good thing is that if there ever was an innovative and resourceful bunch, it's us sustainability minded people. While there are really big challenges in what we do and some targets can feel very high, almost unachievable aims, I think the sustainability work is and at essence, an exercise in focusing on the future in a positive way. We're looking at those challenges and goals for what better workplaces, better ways of doing business and with better environmental outcomes will look like. We're working out how best to get there. So for us and uh, the program managers, it's always been the most rewarding part of what we do, working with you, our signatories, who are fearless and leading the way. But how do we get everyone else to join us? That's the question that our next speaker has been asking. So I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Rebecca Huntley to talk us through some of the trends and opportunities that she sees. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me to present at the annual City Switch Awards. As you all know, these awards were supposed to happen last year, but got canceled, well, at the very least postponed, which was a very 2020 thing to happen. Um, I can't think of a better time to be giving these awards out at the beginning of 2021, as we start to see the vaccine roll out around the world and in this country. And we all very much hope that that brings us back to something approximating normal. Uh, today, I wanna to talk to you about two issues. The first, what happened with climate action during COVID, so during last year, as we look back at the past 12 months of um, extraordinary happenings here and overseas, and what the social research on attitudes and action on climate looks like and how it intersects with the goals of City Switch. I suspect there are many people in the room who believe that after the Black Summer fires, there was momentum building for a fast move towards climate action, including moving to a low carbon economy, and that the emergence of COVID slowed that momentum. The research around the fires showed that it indeed shifted the views of people who, who we would describe as really concerned about climate towards an even greater concern. But unfortunately, it didn't necessarily convince the majority of the population of the need for urgent action. So it pushed people who are already concerned further along that trajectory, but for other people, it really didn't do a lot. 
In fact, in the research I've done, uh, the community tended to attribute the causes of the fire to things like arson, bad land management and hot weather. This, along with many other research projects I've conducted, confirms for me that Australians need personally relevant and immediately beneficial reasons to embrace climate solutions such as renewable energy. On the plus side, even in one of the most disruptive and destructive years in living memory, where every day felt uncertain, action on climate galloped forward regardless. We've seen big companies like Woolworths make significant commitments to transitioning towards renewable energy. Big superannuation companies like Aware Super are reorienting both their brand and their investments towards support for renewable energy. So many Australian and Australian active companies are now part of what's called the RE100, a global initiative bringing together the world's most influential businesses committed to 100% renewable electricity. We've seen big investments of money across the eastern seaboard states towards renewable energy zones and a greater support for both wind and solar. Perhaps the big states will soon catch up with the ACT and my home state, South Australia, in this regard, have already been really kicking goals in relation to renewable energy for some time. There's also been leadership at the local government level, and it's even been more notable because we've got councils of all political persuasions in rural areas, regional areas, outer suburbs and inner cities investing in local energy solutions. And there are actually too many to mention here, but I might single out one called the Light Years Ahead project. It's a collaborative approach between nine councils. It's one of the largest ever energy reduction projects and it's focused on Western Sydney, which tends to have um, pretty, pretty high temperatures and pretty high um, energy prices for residents, um, um, courtesy of climate change. Anyway, they've been replacing um, high emission vapour streetlights with energy efficient LED lighting and the project independent, independently evaluated has achieved a 4.4 million kilowatt per year energy reduction accompanied by a 77% reduction in energy costs. Um, like I said, just one of, uh, uh, great because it's a collaborative project, but individual councils are just also deciding to kind of um, move ahead with renewable energy. And finally, last year was topped off by, I think, two notable events for me, the election of Joe Biden as President of the United States with a platform that put climate action at the centre and who has spent his first few weeks as President unashamedly pursuing these commitments and the conversion of uh, mining magnate Twiggy Forrest to an enthusiast for green hydrogen and so I think will wonders never cease. So while last year confirmed to me that extreme weather events will not in and of themselves shift public opinion in the time we have to act on climate, it's also confirmed to me that with the right leadership, we can address one crisis and tackle another. Indeed, research conducted in the middle of last year showed that COVID-19 made 47% of Australians more concerned about climate change, only 9% less, and the remainder of us with the same level of concern that we've always had. So it might have felt that COVID stopped the momentum around action about climate change, but we can walk and chew gum at the same time, which is good. So we have the technology, we have the resources, and we have the human capital to address the challenges of climate change. And with the right leadership across all sectors, I really believe we can do it. And that's what we're celebrating with this event today, leaders in business working towards a carbon positive future. When I first learned about City Switch, I felt immediately positive about the program because it was providing employers and employees, workplaces of all kinds to get involved in energy and waste reduction. Research shows that Australians really struggle to work out how to contribute to climate and environmental action beyond their own doorstep, beyond their roles as consumers and household managers. And City Switch really gives them a structure and a way to make that contribution. The research shows that except for a minority of us who approach climate change purely from a kind of ethical or moral standpoint, most of us need a range of drivers to get us to act. So those drivers that have to be personal, professional and social, as well as ethical. So the combination of reducing costs and risks, 
improving health and productivity and working towards a carbon positive future. All the goals of City Switch really meet all those immediate and practical needs as well as the, these more long-term and ethical needs. While Australians expect governments, particularly the federal government, to lead the way on energy transition and addressing the challenges of climate change, they know the extent of the problem requires all hands on deck. So we all have a role to play. I am involved in a long-term research project called Climate Compass. It's an audience segmentation of Australians' attitudes and behaviours around climate change. And it really shows that we we don't just expect the government to act, we expect all kinds of leaders in all sectors to act. Indeed, that research shows that 73% of us believe businesses and corporations should be taking the lead on climate change. 67% of us also look to local councils and 59% want leadership from our workplaces and our colleagues. In terms of what the compass shows about what kinds of behaviour change we want our leaders to be encouraging, it reveals that regardless of where we sit on climate, so whether we're alarmed, whether we're just concerned, whether we're even disengaged or even doubtful about the science and solutions, where there is a consensus is that many, many of us, the vast majority of us want to see more of us encouraged to switch to greener energy providers and to reduce our energy consumption. And those with the highest level of concern around climate change and the highest appetite for this kind of action, this kind of reduction of our energy consumption and moving to green energy, well, they tend to be in office roles, non-managerial office sales and service roles, office-based executives and other skilled professionals. The Compass also shows us that the biggest barrier to behaviour change across all the groups is what we would describe as automatic motivation. So that what that means is that we're being asked to do something that we instinctively feel is the right thing to do. So if we don't feel it's the right thing to do, almost instinctively in our gut, we're far less likely to do it. And, and that instinct, instinctive motivation is really important. And, and it's, it's because other people around us might be on board, that we feel confident it's possible, that it will make a difference, but more than anything, that our leaders endorse and encourage it. That's so important to automatic motivation. So I'm particularly interested in how workplace-based action on green energy and waste reduction can engage younger wor workers and increase their automatic motivation that this is the right thing to do. There is actually a noticeable generational skew in attitudes to climate, no matter what research you look at. Overall, and we don't want to generalise too much, but the younger you are, the more concerned you are. Professionals in HR are constantly telling me that it's younger workers and graduates who are more likely to ask if a potential employer has policies on climate and the environment and whether there's scope in their workplace for action on these issues. And whilst most Australians report that when it comes to climate change, they want to hear about it from scientists or the CSIRO, TV documentaries, friends and family, there is one group of Australians who are more likely to want to hear about it from their employer and their workplace and their colleagues. And this group just happens to be a much younger group. It's a group that we call the alert. It's made up about of about 6% of the population. And they tend to skew towards younger men living in urban areas who are highly educated. And these people in this alert category, well, they see climate change as a highly important policy area. They're also focused on other issues such as job creation and education. And while this group shows high levels of anxiety about climate change, almost half of them believe that we have perhaps left it too late to do anything about it. So ensuring these young people don't fall into despair is very important and workplaces can play a vital role in turning this despair into enthusiasm and action. The City Switch program has so much to recommend itself. Uh, I'm so glad to see so many different kinds of businesses involved in it, and I hope it continues to go from strength to strength in the coming years. Thank you so much for your time. I'm sorry I'm not there to ask questions, but I really hope to be invited back to speak to you again before too long. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I hope that everyone's feeling energised and pumped to take on the world now. So let's meet the City Switch signatories who have been doing just that and start the awards announcements. We'll be hearing a message from each of the partner cities, seeing the finalists for that state and then the winners before we move on to our national segment.
thank you for the opportunity to be part of this celebration as we acknowledge the sustainability achievements of Australia's office sector. Through these awards, you will hear about outstanding results in sustainability leadership, climate action, enhancing the well-being of employees and responsible resource management. These things are an important focus for us here at the City of Perth. Over the years, we have proactively supported our local business community to engage with the City Switch program. In Perth CBD, there are 70 signatories and a further 23 in metropolitan Perth. A vast range of organisations participate, everyone from complex global businesses in sectors such as resources, finance and engineering, government offices of all levels of government, startups, NGOs and even small family-run enterprises. With continued community engagement in City Switch since 2008, the City of Perth has been a proud program partner and the new council will continue this commitment. We're focused on delivering a city which respects, protects and fosters its natural environment, embraces the principles of sustainability and acknowledges the impacts of our changing climate. And City Switch remains key to that aspiration. The City of Perth and New Council believe the key to having a sustainable city is to have people living in it. The City of Perth has adopted an ambitious target of increasing our population from 27,500 people today to 90,000 residents by the year 2050. In inviting people to live in Perth, the city becomes increasingly vibrant and businesses can thrive. Underpinning this vision will be the buildings of tomorrow, sustainable, high performing and future ready, nestled among great streets and beautiful open spaces. Put simply, Western Australian businesses cherish Perth as a beautiful and connected place with incredible natural values and perfect climate. And together, we're doing our part to keep it that way for future generations. For this reason, the City Switch program plays an important role and we are very proud to be a part of it. Thank you for your time, goodbye and good luck. It gives me great pleasure now to announce the winner of the 2020 City Switch Award signatory of over 2,000 square metres for WA is... Good luck, everyone. The Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Congratulations. Everyone is feeling the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and it's a shame we can't get together for our annual celebration of achievement. I'm pleased to hear that Adelaide signatories remain committed and have made progress on their sustainability agenda. Now more than ever, action to better manage energy or to track emission sources can make good business sense. With many office staff still working from home, businesses in the Adelaide community continue to innovate in order to reduce their environmental impact as we are at the City of Adelaide. Thrilled to announce last week that we've achieved one of Council's key strategic outcomes, certified carbon neutrality for the City of Adelaide's own operations through the Australian Government's Climate Active Program. I'm proud of Adelaide's contribution to the national efforts and wish all award winners the best in 2021 and I hope to see you again in person soon. Thank you and enjoy the ceremony. It's my pleasure to announce the South Australian Award winners. The winner of the Signatory of the Year over 2,000 square metres is Uniting Communities.
The winner of the signatory of the year under 2,000 square metres is D squared. Highly commended signatory of the year under 2,000 square metres is JPE Design Studio. I'd like to express my warm regards for the city switch signatories. We know everyone is feeling the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm sorry we can't get together as usual for the annual celebration of your achievements. The objectives of city switch closely align with the philosophies of North Sydney Council, emphasising climate action, staff wellbeing and ensuring sustainability measures are integrated into our infrastructure and operations. It's now my pleasure to announce the City Switch Award winners for 2020. Winner of the signatory of the year over 2,000 square metres is Property New South Wales. Yay! Winner of the, the signatory of the year under 2,000 square metres is Finder. Congratulations, Finder. Highly commended for signatory of the year under 2,000 square metres is Senstein Varmi. Congratulations, Senstein Varmi. Congratulations once again to all the finalists and to all those outstanding winners. Well done. We are here today to say thank you to everybody involved in the City Switch Awards. We are so grateful to you for your actions in lowering carbon in our economy. I'd like to express my particular hellos to everybody out there who is a signatory to the City Switch program. While we can't all get together for the awards as we normally would be, it is inspiring to see so many Melbourne organisations continuing their great work and their commitments to making progress to the sustainability agenda. City Switch is a key part of the City of Melbourne's continued approach to a low carbon future by working with leaders to bring about change. That change comes in many different ways. It could be about your on-site waste and energy consumption. It could be efforts to undertake future facing projects like becoming carbon neutral. It could be making a climate change declaration or it could be about purchasing green electricity. All of these efforts make a difference. I am proud of our city's contribution uh, to our national efforts and I wish everybody who is an award finalist the very best of luck in the year ahead. Thank you so much for being part of this program and I hope you enjoy the ceremony. It now gives me great pleasure to announce the City Switch 2020 Award winners. I have them right here. And the winners are for the winner of Signatory of the Year over 2,000 square metres, I'm delighted to announce KPMG as the winner for 2020. Congratulations. For the highly commended 
I am so pleased to announce that Globe International has been highly commended this year. And for Signatory of the Year, under 2,000 square metres, the winner is Basinger Coles. Congratulations. A very warm welcome to all City Switch signatories today. And I'm sorry we aren't meeting in person as we usually do to celebrate your achievements. Given the upheavals resulting from COVID-19, it's especially inspiring that so many signatories remain committed and that our business communities continue to progress on so many sustainability fronts. The submissions we have received for the awards made the scale and the commitment of your ambitions clear. Now, more than ever, sustainability makes sound business sense. Your businesses have continued to innovate, whether that's through reductions in, in on-site waste and energy consumption, or through switching to renewable energy, as the City of Sydney has done. And I'm proud to say using 100% renewable electricity since July last year. I am inspired by the contributions and the leadership shown by every one of you. All of you would know that an effective response to the climate emergency will involve all of us working together. So I want to see Australia cities continue to build relationships with our innovative business leaders and for you to continue to lead the business community and help other businesses to take climate action. I thank you all for what you are doing and I wish the award finalists the very best you can all take pride in your work to date, and I hope that next year I can celebrate with you in person. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the ceremony. It is now my pleasure to announce the 2020 National City Switch Award winners, and they are the winner of the Signatory of the Year over 2,000 square metres is Property New South Wales. Highly commended is the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Signatory of the Year under 2,000 square metres is D Squared. The winner of the Partnership of the Year, Kundal and TSA Group. Highly commended is Victor Chang Cardiac Research and St Vincent Centre for Applied Medical Research. So congratulations to you all. Again, I say, your, your, what you've achieved this year has been outstanding and we are very proud to work with you. When we first found out we were finalists of the City Switch National Awards, we were really proud and excited of what we've achieved. Because we're a research institute, there are a large number of delicate experiments going on here. So it's important that the temperature in the laboratories is tightly controlled and maintained. In the past, this has used an enormous amount of energy. We overcame this by using some smart technology provided by Siemens in the form of pressure and flow sensors which reduced our energy usage of the chilling plant by approximately 10% a year. The second project was a nice simple one, swapping out old low efficiency lights with new LED lighting. In total 440,000 kilowatt hours a year will be saved to these two projects or 356 tonnes of carbon emissions, which is approximately 80,000 a year in savings for the building. Thank you very much for the nomination to be finalists at City Switch Award, and we wish all the finalists the very best of luck. Hi everyone, we are Madeline and Matt from Kandel in our beautiful Perth office in the CBD. 
and um, we thought we maybe share a little bit about our sustainability journey today. In 2012, we started to develop a sustainability roadmap, and our latest version um, from 2017 had quite some strict um, targets for climate mitigation in there, including to become carbon neutral by 2020. And about four weeks ago, we actually achieved this target um, and became the first consultancy in the world, the first engineering consultancy, I shall say, in the world to um, certify carbon neutral with the Carbon Trust across the world. I am so glad to share with you that uh, TSA Group is uh, carbon neutral and uh, they are the first in Australia uh, becoming a, a, a CX uh, service uh, specialist becoming carbon neutral. So we are very happy for them and uh, this is a testimony that anyone can become carbon neutral, anyone should become carbon neutral. Yeah, definitely. And uh, together, um, TSA and Kandil, um, together we neutralize about 6,000 tons of carbon <laughs> um, in the last three years. So it's quite an achievement and we're very proud. Um, and lastly, we want to use this to thank all the program managers from City Switch to organize this event and to also run City Switch so smoothly and so well and uh, really give us an incentive to do better every, every year. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Francis Stockwell from TSA Group. TSA has been a proud signatory of City Switch since 2017. We've made numerous sustainability improvements over the years, but this year we decided to go big and become carbon neutral. Becoming Climate Active Certified is an incredibly worthwhile process, which we would recommend to all businesses, regardless of size or industry. Hi everyone, I'm Rhys White, Head of Operations for the Cushman and Wakefield IFM business. Cushman and Wakefield has been a signatory of the City Switch program for several years, and we support and encourage all our clients in their City Switch commitment. Cushman and Wakefield is committed to sustainability and strives to be a responsible steward of the environment. We continue to seek to identify all environmental risks and opportunities associated with our business, including climate change and resource depletion. We strive to contact our operations and deliver our products and services with the highest standard of environmental care and social responsibility. And to this end, we are committed to a sustainable future, achieving a balance between environmental, technological, economic, and social objectives. Good luck to all the City Switch Award nominees, as together we do our part. Um, so, a little introduction to me, um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Ben King, uh, I'm the Corporate Social Responsibility Manager here at Finder. Uh, so it's my job to ensure that Finder is maximising its positive social and environmental impact. Sustainability aligns a lot to our core values as an industry and also a practice. Um, it's pretty central to what we do. Um, promoting um, reuse, reduction of consumption, uh, and improved efficiencies to reduce the sort of carbon and environmental and energy footprint of our homes and products is very important to us. Um, to share responsibility and leadership in this field is also really important um, to implement change but also to, um, to market ourselves as leaders. Um, and having a resource such as City Switch um, with that knowledge to help educate and help us understand and develop those skill sets has been quite important. Cool. And for our projects and the things we do at the business, it's we like to walk the talk. So it's important that we can actually implement these um, initiatives both at our office and in our work and hopefully in our personal lives. Globe's campaign of doing everything sustainably as possible uh, is called Living Low Velocity. Absolutely love what they're doing, with the direction they're going, going a more sustainable route. Trying to look after the planet and the rest of it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of keeping the environment clean and looking after uh, the ocean, which I love so much. So uh, yeah, Globe are really pushing hard to do that. It's not an easy job, but they've dedicated themselves to it and, and so have I. I'm trying to do a lot of things, not only clothing wise, but just in general. I do everything I can to um, do my bit for the planet. It's very fitting 
loving it. And that's the conclusion of our awards announcements and event for today. A massive congratulations to all of our finalists and winners from me, Danny, Toby, Dee, Phil, along with everyone from our national program partners, the cities of Sydney, North Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide and Perth, and the New South Wales Department of Planning, Industry and Environment, particularly the wonderful Neighbours team. We will be sharing more details of the finalist and winner stories, so please keep an eye out for more on that. And if you're feeling inspired, do chat to your program manager if there's anything big you want to get working on. We always love to hear from you and maybe we'll be seeing you up on stage next time. Thank you once again for tuning in today and see you again soon.